So, so it seems to me that you guys have got a problem because you accept other hadiths in Sahih al-Bukhari and you grade them as Sahih, don't you? Yeah, I think we, right. we take it in front of But the same methodology is used by Bukhari to say that hadiths that you do accept are Sahih, but then there are hadiths that you don't accept, but the same methodology is what gave those hadiths as well. So how do you reconcile this contradiction? You don't know. Bob, can I come in? Yeah, of course. Do you remember me? I don't. We spoke in the shard. Okay. A long time ago. Brilliant. Excellent. How are you? My name is Mashoud. Nice to meet you, Mashoud. My brother has more educated than I am. Not that much. Right. <laughs> anyway. So did you hear my question? Repeat it again, sorry. So the question is, right, are you Ahmadiyya as well? Am, yeah. Right. So Ahmadiyya Muslims reject this hadith. Can you uh, narrate part of the hadith? Yeah, I'll, I'll, re I'll relate the whole hadith. It's very short. Six, eight, seven, eight. Allah's Messenger said, The blood of the Muslim who confesses that none has the right to be worshipped by Allah and that I am his messenger cannot be shed except in three cases. In Kisas for murder, a married person who commits illegal sexual intercourse and the one who reverts from Islam and leaves the Muslims. So, i.e. the murder of apostates. Now, Ahmadiyya are good Muslims. They're, they're the kind of Muslims I can get along with. They don't want to kill Christians who leave Islam. But that means you're rejecting this hadith, right? We take the hadith in context. Right, go on. So, in that case, that would have been recited at a time where people were becoming Muslim and becoming like spies and then leaving Islam. And that's the way we will interpret those hadiths that yes, if a person who was in a state of war basically became, come, came to your side and said, hey, I'm a Muslim, learn all your secrets, and then they would revert back. But that's not someone who became a Muslim, is it? If they came to spy, they're they not a Muslim. Pretend, yeah, correct. They pretend right. to be Muslim. But it doesn't talk about people who pretend. Hey, it says apostates. Say that. Why wouldn't he say that? You're he saying that. Say someone who pretends to be a Muslim. But why are you saying it if Muhammad didn't say it? Because you've got to take it in context. You've got to look at other references, other hadiths. For example, there were many apostates, many people who did apostate. I agree, they the were. the Prophet never, in fact, the Prophet never ordered the execution. He never killed an apostate. Yet there were many wait, examples of apostates. Wait, wait, wait one second. Because he, he according to hadith stories, Muhammad wanted the execution of, uh, and ordered the execution of many people. Correct. Including, now, including people who left Islam. So, there is a hadith about that, and one person interfered yeah. and says, no, he is my relative, and the Prophet said, okay, fine. Exactly, so, now, so but Muhammad did order the execution. He, he instructed it, however, Muhammad would never ever go against a command of God, in our case, in our interpretation. Yeah. So, if this was a command of God, yeah. and instruction from the Holy Quran, he would never have forgiven that person. So, are you saying that this is a command of Muhammad? A, at the time of war, yes, a temporary command. All right. So you're say. saying that you're saying that this is not Just from like Allah. Adultery. Wait, wait. Yes. You're saying that this is not from Allah. You're saying this is from Muhammad. Potentially, yes. So Muhammad is creating his own law. He is at the time of war. But in the time of so so following your logic. So you're God saying, one second, you're saying in a time of war, Allah, Muhammad is creating his own Sharia. I wouldn't say creating his own Sharia, but there are, there are rules of engagement, rules of war, which God did not necessarily have to reveal. So Muhammad gave these commands. He, he instructed that, but right. then later on, God would have revoked it through the Holy Quran. You have many passages which go against killing apostates. Go on, let's, let's talk about some of those passages that go against killing apostates. We talked about one, which is let there be no compulsion in religion. Uh, okay, yeah. I, I, yeah, that's one. And that's a really powerful one. It is one, yeah. You know, because my, my but, but, but my, and, and, and it'd be good to show some others because the reality is lots of the Sunni Muslims here claim that, that, you, can that, that you can kill apostates yeah, and they use these yeah. hadiths that you're rejecting. So find that Quranic verse. There's a Quranic verse which talks about people who believe and then disbelieve. Yeah. Believe and then disbelieve. Disbelieve, yeah. Believe and then talk repeat it like three times. Can we can we pull it up? Yeah, yeah. Can you find it? And there's another one which talks about uh, when the Holy uh, with people who disbelieve after believing they do such and such thing and then yeah. they will be their their body will be the hellfire yeah. except if they repent. Yeah. So somebody who if you well, I let's say a Muslim becomes a Christian. Yeah. God wouldn't tell them, hey, look, you, 
you have time to repent, blah, 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 you'll be executed pretty yep. much quickly. So there's those commands. If you, can you find that one? Well, you, you, well, well, whilst he's looking, Go on. right, here, here's the other question. Is that you're saying, you're saying that this hadith is from Muhammad. That Muhammad is making his own law. He's not making his own law. Well, he is, isn't he? Because he's saying, he, he's saying, the blood of a Muslim who confesses that none has the right to be worshipped by Allah and that I am his messenger cannot be shed except in three cases for murder, for adultery and for apostasy. So what I would say to that... So, yeah. so Muhammad is making a ruling here. Either that or his, what, his what, what, own what, ruling one second. On, 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 on one God. second. Go on one on. second. On what basis, on what authority is Muhammad making that ruling? On the basis of rules of engagement of war, even modern times, from what I understand, if spies are caught... He's not saying spies. True that, but if you take well, the show, in show, contact... Well, you show me another... You show me where this is talking about spies. I wouldn't... Because you're making a claim and I don't believe... I think you've got to prove it. True that. What I, the, way I would, I, the way I would tackle that is by showing Quranic verses which will probably reeled after that, which yeah. go against that teaching. So either yeah. the one way is you reject the hadith, but I don't, I don't really necessarily need to do that. So I you're saying, in context. So you're, but, but, but you haven't provided the context of this hadith. I you're saying we've got to take it in context. You're saying that the context is about spies, but you're not showing evidence to that claim. You're I not showing me time, the context that this is about spies. I would say the, rule the, the, the word is, those who, one who reverts from Islam, i.e. one who leaves Islam. Got it, got it. I get that, I get that part. So, I'll show the Quranic verse. Yeah, another Quranic verse. So, yeah, so basically, oh, okay. It says that those who believe, then disbelieve, then again believe, then disbelieve, and then increase in disbelief, Allah will never forgive them, nor will he guide them to the right way. Right. So our argument would be, if it's like saying those who commit murder and then say sorry, those who commit murder say sorry. No, you commit murder, you're going to be executed. Okay, so you so, believe in you believe in execution for murderers? Uh, yes, but there are again there's exceptions to that as well. Yeah. In every Islamic law, there's an exception. I know there's always an exception in Islamic law well, for which, everything. Which makes sense. No, it, it really doesn't. Well, um, it really doesn't. Okay. Like hey, if hey. you've got a law, if, if if we create a law and then say for ev every law. There's an exception. There's there's no exception for stealing. Uh, wait, wait, there is an exception for stealing. No, 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 not if in my... British law there isn't. No, no, no. Stealing oh. is stealing. No, no, no. Okay, look, look. If, if, I, if, I, if I put a gun to your head and say steal this candy bar, and you steal that current candy bar, I'm sure the British government would not punish you for that. So the, in, in this instance, the British government would say you haven't stolen, you were compelled. You're still taking yeah, something that's not Yes, but you did that, it. You did it under it, the threat of death. Semantics, but you have stolen. No, uh, it no, is, because no, it's, it's, it, 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 no. I don't think that that no. is. I, if you, if someone sticks a gun to your head and says, "Steal that candy bar," right? I've what they're doing, what time. they're doing is like they're extorting from you. Yeah. You're not the criminal. The criminal is the one that put the gun to your okay. head. Okay, that's the way I would say exceptional. Or that's not law. an exception. Okay, fine. I'll take that word back. That's not what I meant. That what I mean is laws, there are ways of... The criminal there is not the one that was being forced to do wrong. The criminal was so the one doing the forcing. Right. That's the way I would believe. That in the, that's the way I phrase exceptions. Yeah. The law. That's, the, that's, the, that's yeah. my understanding. But, but hold on one second. Because, because so far, here's the thing, right? We've got hadiths that you're rejecting, right? And you're rejecting. So you, 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 no, you're, you. Okay, so you're reinterpreting. He's rejecting. No, no, I said I wasn't educated. Okay, fair enough. Okay, we'll so talk to. Can I? So, uh, can I, I'll give you so, an example of this first. I'll so, give you an example here. No, one second. Let me let me finish, because I, you, for you to make your case, you have to provide the evidence that this is about spies, that this is about, um, that this is not about apostates. Got it. Because the text is very clear. It's I, I, about apostates. I get it. I get it. Let me. Get and lots, all the Sunnis and all the Shia in this park, they all agree with me. I can really okay. Is that true? It, it, uh, a lot of them do. Some of them so the vast, no, they do. Okay, fine. So they do, they do. Like, give me, let me give you an example. The verse, all the, 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 the second command here, the second person yeah. is adultery, correct? Yeah, the second is adultery, yeah. Right. So there are hadiths which talk about stoning the adulterers. And yeah. stoning the adulterer. But there are other hadiths where, where it talks about Jews coming up to Muhammad yeah. in the time of Medina when he was a chieftain saying, we've caught an adulterer and adulteress. Yeah. What should we do? Yeah. And he goes, I don't know. 
what's in your book. Yes. The Bible, the Torah, yeah. it's adultery. He goes, fine, stone them. Yeah. Now the Quran does not command stoning of adulterers. But Sahih al-Bakari does. But this is the context. That was an early hadith where the Prophet was not given a, cor cor a God command what to yeah. do with that. Yeah. So he went and said, look, you're Jews, follow your own book. Yeah. What do you find in your book? Stone them. Right, go ahead. Yeah. What are you waiting for? Stone them. Yeah. God revealed then in Surah Nisa at a later time. Yeah. No, you don't stone them, you lash them. Yeah. Now now so this is this is the point. This is the is, context. Right. So about. so so what you're saying is that Muhammad was making his own rulings. Now this is problematic. Because explain, because yeah. what is shirk? In Islam. Partners with God. Associating partners with God, but it's also acting in the stead of God, isn't it? Remember what the Quran says? To the Jews, you take you take your rabbis and you take your monks. To the Jews and the Christians, it takes you you take your rabbis and monks as lords beside Allah. And why does he say that? Because the rabbis and the monks were making rulings and the people were following the rulings. And they were going, yeah, which were going against the Torah, whatever. Right. So Muhammad is here making a ruling. So, look, Muhammad is behaving like the rabbis and monks that your Quran condemns. Let me explain again. So, he was the governor of Mecca and Medina. Sorry, Medina. He was the governor he was, of Medina. He was the governor of Medina. He had not been given a command by God of how to deal with adulterers. Jews came up to him and said, what do we do? He said, I don't know. What does your book say? Yeah. Your book says stone him. He goes, go ahead and stone them. That is not shirk. No. No, you, that's not my argument. What is your argument? Sorry, my argument is the Quran states about the rabbis and the monks. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It states that you have taken Them. your rabbis and monks as lords beside Allah. Correct. Right? Why? Because they were making rulings. Correct. They were passing their own law. Instead, what right? about, that's, yeah. that's Muhammad's position. That's, okay. uh, you know, and, and, but yet here you're saying Muhammad is doing that, that he is making his own rulings. And until God has given him a command, if he, go, if he went against the command of God, yeah. that is shirk then, yes, then yeah. we obey him. But until God had revealed to him what to do, yeah. he went with the times. Right, so, so what you've got in, in Ahmadiyya Islam, is that you've got Muhammad making his own rulings and then wherever Allah introduces a ruling that contradicts Muhammad's ruling. That obviously Ma all right. it. Yes. But what about the ones where Muhammad hasn't or it doesn't directly contradict? Give you an example? Well, all the hadiths. You mean an example of a ruling that he made that's not, I don't know, I'm, I can, I'm, I'm not sure, I'm curious. Do you know when it, can, listen, if we uh, go into No, no, so, so no, I'm just thinking about, uh, think, thinking about, well, you haven't given me an example of the context. We're still waiting for your right, so example I, of, I that gives this I context. All I would say to right, you, if you don't know, if you don't know, I would suggest to you that actually that this hadith was probably quite late in Islam and that this hadith was about, um, and, and, and the reason why Sunni Muslims accept it is because it was understood by the early Muslim community to be a ruling that they had to follow. But it goes against the Quran. I agree it does. Yes. I agree with you. So I, would, I agree with the Ahmadiyya. Un un unlike, the, unlike the Jews who have taken their Lord instead of God, yes. we take the Quran instead of any but, but ruling. This, but, but your logic would mean that there is a composite between Muhammad's rulings and Allah's rulings. Because you know and I know. Replacement. So no, no, there's a composite. So for example, the the forms of prayer that you follow yes. right they're not from there's nowhere in the quran where it says this is the form that you pray in there's no verse in the quran that says pray five times a day so we follow muhammad yeah. instructions there. right but the four exactly yes. so sharia law is, is a composite yes. is a composite yes. of allah's rulings and muhammad's rulings yes. right so that means that what you're saying is Sharia law is not something that is entirely revealed by Allah. It is a composite of Allah's words and Muhammad's words. And Muhammad being inspired in many ways. But where was Muhammad inspired to tell you there are many, to pray five times a day? I don't know the hadith. I don't think there is a hadith that God told him. Well, actually, God told him to pray five times. Yeah. How that that is not in the Quran. Yeah. But that's in the hadith. Yeah. And that is God directly telling Muhammad pray five times. Because the hadith, the mirage. Yeah. You yeah, know yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, even even that's problematic. Also. What right? So think about it. Go Muhammad goes up to Allah, 
in the highest heaven. He doesn't see him, he sees a veil of light. And he gets told that, what is it, like 50 times a day you have to pray? Then he comes back down, he passes by Moses, and Moses says, Moses says, this is too hard for the Ummah. Go back up and ask for a reduction. On what basis can the prophets negotiate with God about what is the basis this is of the, prayer? This is the beauty of Islam though, where God can talk to his creation. And he negotiates. He, he, negotiate. Yes, they haggle. That's You're saying the prophets are haggling with God. Oh, that's beautiful in a way. That's You're a saying mercy. the prophets are haggling that's with God. Mercy. That's the mercy of God. That he takes his servant. There's so many of these where people kind of go from he go from hell, they exit out of hell, they go, they haggle with God, and he intercedes and he goes, yes. So you know, there's one of these where a man sees a dream of his brother who's passed away. Yeah. And the man asks, "What did God? How did God deal with you?" Yeah. And the man goes, "Oh, he he interrogated me like crazy. He said, yeah. you did that, you did this, you yeah. did that.'" And finally, the man said, "I blurted out, my lord, this is not what I've heard about you." Yeah. The angel, the angel Gabriel told Muhammad. Muhammad told me that my, my, whoever, however you you accept your lord, that's where he'll he'll treat you. Yeah. And he goes, "I did not expect you to have this much, you know, interrogation on me." And God said, "You're right." Angel is right, Muhammad is right, and God forgave him. So th this is the beauty of the relationship. I find it, I find it beautiful. Yeah. So, so here, here, here's the problem with that. Because the Quran is replete with the words that Allah does as he wills. Yes. Yeah? That, that means that if Allah is, and that Allah is sovereign, yes. and that he is the ruler, <coughs> and that the, the, the prophets are meant to submit. Remember, the, the idea of all the prophets is that they submit to the will of Allah. Not that they haggle, with Allah's will. Not that they say to Allah, actually, 50 prayers a day is a bit much, Allah. Do you want to perhaps reconsider that? Because Allah is meant to know best. Prophets are meant to submit. So if Allah says it's 50 prayers a day, it's 50 prayers a day. It's but not Allah, five. Allah uh, knows past, present, future. Gone. He knew that it would be five. So he, he let that happen. There's many things he lets happen. It's a it's a beautiful thing. It's a great relationship, like a, almost like a, a father son yeah. kind of relationship. And I'd say, stop arguing against it. It's great. Why are you why are you arguing against it? The great. If it was such a kingly, oh, you do what I command, you'd criticize that as well. So so if someone in it, like if a Muslim came into the masjid and said, you know, I think this is too hard. I think that's too hard. You just go, this is what Allah has commanded. This is what we are supposed to do. That makes you, the average Muslim, better than the prophets. Because the prophet's attitude was not to go, this is what Allah has commanded, this is what I am to do. The response of the prophets was, 50 is too hard, knock it down some. Thir I don't know what the next number was, so I'm just going to recite odd numbers. Can I give you 30 is too hard, knock it down some. 20 is too hard, knock it down some. 15 is too hard, knock it down some. 5 is too... No, six five, 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 five. We can just about manage five. Thanks, Allah. So look, that the, means that the average Muslim is well, better than the prophets. Give me an example. In the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. Jesus prays to God, says, "Please, God, take this cup away from me. Yeah. Not as my will, but as Thou will." Yeah. So here, Jesus is praying, "Take this away from me," and according to you, He would know that He's going to die, but He's bleeding. Now, it's always the prayer happens, but then you end it with. Whatever you will, I will accept. Now, but where, case, where did Moses do that? Sorry, Moses. Went, uh, Moses didn't do that, though, did he? In the hadith that we're talking about, yeah, yeah. Moses didn't go, Allah, please, for the sake of the Ummah, reduce it from fifty to five. Well, Muhammad, but no. not my will, but yours be done. And Muhammad didn't do that either. Muhammad didn't go up to Allah and say, Allah, oh, reduce it from fifty prayers to five prayers, but not my will, but yours we be done. Really what what, what actually happened was that, that Moses and Muhammad knew better than Allah, and they haggled with Allah <laughs> about how many prayers to have, and they didn't even do what Muslims in the masjid do, which is when you say, well, this is too hard, reply, well, this is the will of Allah, suck it up, lads. What he did was, they went backwards and forwards negotiating with Allah about how much you should pray. I would, uh, my reply to that is, it shows a beautiful relationship between Allah and his creation. 
where people can, but obviously Allah's will is the final will. Yeah. And you can, you can go to God. You, and there are many hadiths where people have done that. And they've, 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 they've been good, they've just discussed. Obviously Allah takes precedence, but this is, it's a great But thing. Allah takes precedence, but not in the case of how much you pray. Well, Moses' words took precedence in how much you pray. Well, if... if Who got their way? Maha Allah or Moses? Moses, Moses. Moses. Well, Muhammad, Moses, yeah. Yeah, Moses, Moses got his Allah way. Allah knew. He knows past, present, Allah future. said 50. Moses said, no, mate, too hard. And it got reduced but down to five. But you compared it to Jesus' word in the Garden of Gethsemane. What happened in the Garden of Gethsemane? Jesus said, Father, if I be willing, take this cup from my hand. But in the immediate next sentence, as an immediate part of that prayer, not my will, but yours be done. What Christ was doing there was not negotiating with God. He was submitting his human will to God. He was submitting his human passions to God. That's what is happening in that scene. Okay. But that's not comparable to what Moses is doing. So again, we don't know how the negotiations already happened. Yeah. These are just first, these are stories and illustrations of how the mercy of God works. Yeah. You can talk to God. You can, so, there's so many Islamic stories that show the beauty of this, where people have misunderstood God. Yeah. And I get Moses, a Islamic story where a man, Moses walks past a man, and the man says, oh God, if you had lice in your hair, I'd remove it. I'd do that, I'd do this. Moses rebukes the man, and then God rebukes Moses afterwards, saying, how dare you? I loved his speech. It was great, and he loved me, and I, I wanted to continue. Don't interfere. So these are just these are stories to illustrate. But if, yeah, going back to Garden of Gethsemane, if Jesus knew everything, it does beg the question. Wait, 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 where do Christians claim that Christ in his humanity knew everything? I don't know that. They don't claim that? They don't claim that. Okay, then. We claim, because the Bible teaches, that when Christ took on a human nature, he took on and became like us in every way. And that includes in limited knowledge. But so Christ, man, he's perfect man though, isn't he? Yes, I he, know, I've he was perfect. Are, are he was, you okay with we, that? No, no, no. We, we can come on to that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, there's something else. Uh, uh, bear with us. Go for it. No, no. Bear with us. I don't want to jump in case you... No, no. Yeah, yeah. This is why I like Ahmadiyya Muslims. <laughs> you're, you're good folks. You don't, you don't will evil on people. No, no. And no. I just want to say for the sake of the camera that Ahmadiyya Muslims are a persecuted minority in the Islamic world. And we should oppose the persecution of the Ahmadiyya in Pakistan and wherever the Ahmadiyya are being persecuted. Thank you, Bob. Because I don't hate none of you guys, you know? But I know with the Ahmadiyya that I can receive love back. Yes, you can. Now, now I'm, I want to keep one eye on my brother because that crowd is getting a bit rowdy and I'm just a little bit anxious that it might kick off. Yeah? You've been uh, training for this and... Uh... Dude, do I look like someone who's physically trained? <laughs> What are you going to do with her then, are you? Go on then. Bear with us. I want, to, I, want, no, no, no. I want to return to the topic of the hadiths. Right, because your argument for rejecting aspects of Sahih al-Bukhari is because the Quran contradicts it. I want to show you where the Quran rejects all hadiths. Okay. All hadiths. So bear with us one second. Right, do you want to get your Quran? Let's get it out. So come to, come to Surah 45, Ayah 6. So, one second. Surah 45, Ayah 6. It's seven and hours because we can't be full there. Surah 45, Ayah 6. These are the signs of Allah which we have rehearsed unto thee with truth. In what word then, after rejecting that of Allah and the signs, will they believe? Can you read the Arabic? So, okay. So the signs is Ayahs, right? Or is it Hadith? Uh, yes, Tilka uh, Ayah. Ayah. Ayat and then the other word in there, the where it says, and what other words will you hadith. believe in? Hadith. Yes. So now let's put those two words in. 
these are the ayahs, these are the ayahs that we, that we recite to you with truth, so in which hadith, other than God and His revelation, do they believe. Got it. So according to your logic, when you reject the, the hadith on apostasy, according to your logic, if you're being consistent, you should reject all hadith. I understand your argument. Hadith does not hadith literally means saying. Yes, a report. A report. Yeah. So here God I I wouldn't, I wouldn't argue no no commentator in history nor our commentator to argue that this saying of Allah is talking about the saying of Muhammad. Hold on one second. That's an appeal to authority. That's a, fa a logical fallacy. Explain. Uh, an appeal to authority is when you appeal to scholars as if scholars prove the argument. Remember, most scholars accept the hadith I showed you earlier about apostasy and said that apostasy was fine. So I wasn't talking about, I was saying throughout history, I'm talking about those scholars and our own scholars. Yes, but what I'm saying to you is that most scholars through Islamic history have accepted the hadith on apostasy. This is why this is a fallacy. Appealing to what the scholars say is a fallacy. The Quran is very clear. If you're consistent to your logic, you should reject all hadith. Got it. Because it says, these are God's signs, God's ayahs, that we recite to you with truth, so in which hadith other than God and His revelation, do they believe? What? What? 46? That's 45, 6. I'm looking at the interlinear Quran and I'm going to find other examples of that Arabic word hadith. Right, let, while, while you're doing that, let me quote to you another verse of the Quran. Because in Surah 7, Ayah 185, it says this, speaking of the Quran, it says, which hadith after it, the Quran, do they believe in? In other words, the implication of the question is, once the Quran is revealed, you don't need anything else. So again, I agree. 45, 6. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you agree. <laughs> You're close to being a Christian, brother. Here's another hadith in Surah 7750. In which hadith after it, the Quran, do they believe? So Allah is saying, Allah is saying, why are you believing in any hadiths? And my point to you is, your logic for rejecting the apostasy hadith was because it contradicts the Quran. Yes. But all hadiths contradict the Quran once the Quran is fully revealed. Uh, no. Yes. So what I, I'm trying to find it in the Arabic, in the, in the Arabic, but what, I'm, what I would say to you, again, this is, you're just taking the Arabic word hadith saying, and you're applying it to the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Hadith can be applied to anything. There are hadith in the Gospels. So where does uh, so so where does Allah say? Show me a verse in the Quran where Allah says, "Follow the hadiths." In in you, Muhammad, you 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 talk to the Muslims, you will find in, in Muhammad a perfect exemplar. Yes. So so where does that say? Write down hadith. It says, "Do what he says," right? No, it, yeah, but that, I mean that's problematic itself because okay. Allah is sharing because Muhammad is, is sharing in the authority of Allah, which is shirk. Because it says in the Quran, obey Allah and Muhammad. Muhammad. And those in authority. Right, right. So what, what is that saying? It's saying that these other groups share in the authority of Allah. Can you share in the attributes of Allah? No. Uh, partly. Partly. I can be merciful. So, so you, so is that, is that, is, that is, your mer, is your mercy like Allah's mercy? No, but it is a, it, Wait, the attributes of is the Muhammad's authority like Allah's authority? You do what he says as a Muslim, yes. Right, exactly. So that shirk, your, it says in the Quran that none that you can't share in any of the attributes of Allah because, Where does it say that? because it says Allah is not like his creation and not like anything he's created. I disagree with that interpretation because that's, one, that's just the plain reading of the text. Well, it, one of the reasons why he displays his attributes and he tells us so many of his attributes is for us to emulate them. Now, again, I'm going to refer to my... Where does it say emulate them? Well, that's, again, that's a reading of our text. That's what Show me in the Quran where it says emulate them. Show me in the Quran where it says emulate the attributes of Allah. Well, His mercy, 
Show me in the Quran it where it says, it doesn't say that there true. you go, it doesn't. But nor does it say what you just said as well. You're no, it, it, it does say, it does say that Allah is not like his creation. I agree with that. But that means that your mercy can't be like his mercy. True, but... Your hand can't be like his hand. I agree with that. Your sight can't, your vision can't be like his vision. Correct. Your authority can't be like his authority. Yes. But Muhammad's authority was like Allah's authority. But again, I think you're looking really deep into the, the Quran. Okay, look, I'm that, looking really... You are. It tells me in the Quran to consider the Quran carefully. Yeah, and then when I consider the Quran carefully, so, you're saying you're considering the Quran you're carefully. You're taking it so, in a way, literally. So the Quran says, obey Allah, in the Quran, the, what, that is the, the Quranic text, yeah. and his messenger, his sayings, and those in authority, like his government. So as a Muslim, we have to do that. Now, if I take that purely literally, it will become nonsensical. It is nonsensical. But if, if I say that to anybody here, using common knowledge, common language, it's understandable. Okay, let, it? let, let's, it's a kind of side point we drifted into. Go for it. Let's return back to the issue of hadiths. The Quran says, listen, from Surah 72, Ayah 3, follow what has been brought down to you. Is that hadiths? No. No. From your Lord, and do not follow any allies beside him. Was Muhammad and the Sahaba allies to Allah? Uh, can I have the, can I have the, I need to look it up. Seven, Surah 7, verses 2 to 3. Surah 7, 2 to 3. This will be revealed so that there be no strange and boasting concerning it. We have warned the believers and the patients. Follow that which has been sent down to you from your Lord and follow no protector other than him. How little do you remember? How many times we destroyed that punishment? Yeah, so follow no, follow no, what's the Arabic protectors? Was Muhammad a protector over the believers? Again, look at the context. Answer the question. He was. There we go. So Allah is saying, do not follow anyone except this revelation that I have given to you. Including yourself. Is that what you're saying? Well, I'm not defending the contradictions of the Quran. I'm just pointing out the it's contradictions not, again, of the Quran. If you look at the context, Surah Araf, yep. if you look at the previous verse, this will reveal to thee, so let there be no statements in thy bosom concerning it, that the ways warned thereby the, the believers. Follow whatever God has revealed to you, but don't follow the other protected. It's, it's talk, talking about himself. Exactly. It's talking about the other Exactly, people. yeah. He's saying, don't follow anything except what I've brought down to you. No, what he brought down was the Quran. And so the Quran is what you're meant to follow, which is your logic in rejecting the apostasy hadith. Who, okay, what are the following but the words Quran, talking about? But the Quran is saying, the Quran is saying in other places, re don't follow hadiths apart from the Quran. No, no, no. Again. Yes, the, yes, yes. The hadith. I'll read it again. I'll read it again. I'll read it again. Look. Let's says it translate quite clearly. It, translate it. These are God's ayahs that we recite to you in truth. So which hadith other than God and his revelations or ayahs do they believe? Say that in English, purely English. Okay, I, I literally, all right, no, pure, no pure English. Arabic, English. Okay, the, nah, this, is, this is a first. I'm being, <laughs> I'm being told to use the Quran in English, no, no, not in Arabic. You can understand first it. time ever you in the park. Can, you can understand first it. time ever in the park. Go on, go on, say right? These are God's revelations that w which we recite to you with truth. So in which report other than God and his revelations, do they believe? Right, report, sayings. What's a hadith? Like said, no, What's no, no. a hadith? Hadith is a saying. It is. It's a report. But, but what is it? Okay, when Jesus report, when Jesus says something in the Gospels, that also is a hadith. It's a saying. So what? You're, you're, now we're talking about Christianity. We don't have this problem in our religion. Saying, I'm inviting you to something better no, when I invite you to Christianity. It so literally. I'm and using what the Quran if says. If I take the same thing, if I apply it to any text, yeah. it will become nonsensical. Okay. Apply to any text, if you so, be pure and literal. Show so me. this says, sh that so sh that, the, the interpretation on. of that is relatively straightforward. This is what God has revealed. Don't take anything, any other saying, as it, which is opposed to it. Don't, don't accept it. So we don't, for example, the parts of the Bible that go against the Quran, we don't accept. The part of any other religious teaching that go against the Quran, we don't accept. So it's, it's in that text 
regarding Surah Araf, where you talk only at the protectors. Again, the text is that Muhammad went to different people to seek their protection as well, and spoke to them and, 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 and preached to them. And God is telling him, fine, you go ahead and do that. But accept what I have sent to you, but do not accept any other protectors beside me, basically. Right, so, so that's yeah. the context of this passage, context. right? Yeah. But when we take all that the Quran is saying, right? Bear in mind, I'm trying to point out to you your inconsistency. Go for it. The inconsistency of the Ahmadiyya Muslims is they reject some hadiths because they say some hadiths contradict the Quran. But the Quran itself contradicts the entire corpus of hadith. Let me give you another example. Okay. Right? Go for it. In Surah 68, Ayah 37, it says, Or do you have some book in which you are studying? God is mocking the idea of following other books apart from the Quran. That's Surah 68, 37. But then 200 years later, after Muhammad's death, Muslims have other books that they start studying to understand the Quran. Is that 38 you said, right? Yeah, and then a thousand years and more after that, Ahmadiyya Muslims take those same books that earlier Muslims invented to help them study the Quran and then pick and choose which hadiths they believe in or not based upon the idea that certain hadiths contradict the Quran when the Quran is contradicting hadiths. That, but that's not a solely Ahmadiyya point of view. A lot of the Sunnis will also accept that what? any hadith that contradicts the Quran is to be... Yeah, I know they give it lip service, but oh, let's okay. be honest, if it says Sahih and it's in Bukhari, the vast majority of Muslims yeah. are going to accept it. And they pay that they pay that logic lip service. The intelligent ones, no. No, and this is why I think that in some ways Ahmadiyya Muslims are smarter than the average Sunni Muslim. Oh, thank you very much. Because <laughs> Ahmadiyya Muslims, they reject hadith that contradict the Quran on the plain face. Like you did earlier. I did. But the Quran is contradicting the idea of hadith en toto. So now you're not being consistent. It's not just that the Sunnis aren't being consistent or the Shias aren't being consistent to their own rhetoric. You as an Ahmadiyya okay. are not being consistent to your own rhetoric. Let's go to the, so it was 68, 38 you said, right? Uh, yep. So, I'll go, go back one verse back. What is the matter with you? How judge ye? Have you a book wherein you read that you shall surely uh, have in it whatever you choose? Or have they a common brand? Sorry, what, what were you reading? I, I read earlier, uh, I read earlier from Surah... Oh, 68, 68. My apologies, I might have given you the wrong reference. Which one is it? Bear with us one second, I'll come back to it. There's something different I was reading. Yes, yeah, Surah 68, 37 is what I read. 30, oh, 37. 37. Uh, okay, what is the matter? Have you a book wherein you read that you should surely have in it whatever you choose? I'm, I'm not reading much more. Uh, we, had, we had one verse. So the, the point is, Allah is mocking the idea of seeking guidance in other books apart from the Quran. And that's exactly what Muslims do when they use hadiths. They find they seek guidance apart from the Quran. Let me, let me, let me. Wait, 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 wait. I don't think you can apply. It. Uh, okay, if you take that logic into, into account, yeah, that means Allah is saying you are not allowed to read any other book except the Quran. Is that what you're arguing? The uh, author is saying here. Uh, no, no. What I'm saying is that you can't use other books for divine guidance according to the Quran. That if you want divine guidance you go to the Quran. If you want secular guidance, guidance about how to raise your farm or raise your pig animals, you can pick up a manual on raising pigs and that's fine. But what you can't do is to get divine guidance, go to another book. God, okay. I would disagree with that interpretation. Unless you're a Jew or a Christian, in which case At you're meant time, to judge by the Injil or the Torah. We can go to At the time of the revelation here, 
there was no other divine book, which we, which Muslims were to be accepting. Yeah. Does the, what the does the, what, why do you use hadiths? I, I know the answer. I'm asking this rhetorically. Why justify the use of hadiths at all? It's complementary to the Quran. It's complementary to the Quran. In, explain like what said, you mean by complementary. There are certain instructions. His habits. Yeah. Or we learned about the Prophet. Yeah. Or through, we learned through the hadiths. Right. Not everything is required. But what's that got to do with the Quran? He's a perfect role model. He's a perfect role model. So we are to follow his model, his, his let, life. Let me give you a more, let me give you a clearer understanding, right? The Quran says pray, but it doesn't teach you how to pray. Good, good, good analogy. So where do you go to we learn go, how we, to pray? We go to the hadith, we go to the sunnah and the hadith. Right, but does the Quran justify that move? Yes. Where? It says pray. Where does it justify going to the hadiths to learn how it to pray? It, it, God told, God told Muhammad, tell the Muslims to pray. And then God left it to Muhammad to, tell, to teach them how to pray. Right, but here's what the Quran actually says. Right, in Surah 12, Ayah 111, it says, the Quran is not a fabricated hadith, but an authentication of what came before it a detailed account of all things. What, what verse, sir? That's Surah 12, Ayah 111. If it's a detailed account of all things, does that include prayer? And in it, it I, I'm sorry, I'm having a conversation, bro. Yeah, let, let me let's continue our conversation, bro. Okay, one second. I, I'm I'm dealing with him. You're asking me a random question. If you want me to use that verse because you think it's relevant to the debate, just say so. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Right. That that's that's connected to the Torah and the Injil. We're talking about the Quran and the Hadith. Okay. Now, in case you were any doubt. Allah repeats himself. He actually says in Surah 1689, we brought the book. What book is he talking about? Uh, read on a bit more so I can know the context. We brought the book down to you. Quran. The Quran, providing an explanation of all things. So Does again, all things include prayer? What I would again say, my point here, again, is, is you don't take it Literally. Oh, you don't take it literally? Uh, yeah, the, the, you, you take a text literally, it becomes nonsensical. So, obviously the Quran contains 6,000 verses. Yeah. It is not an exposition of all things. If so you you're directly contradicting no, the Quran? No, let's take it literally. You're directly contradicting the Quran. If you yeah. take it literally, yeah. it, would then, it should therefore contain instructions about financial matters now as well. It should contain instructions about farming. I agree. About medical stuff. I agree. Right. So that, that is the that is the claim that the Quran is making. Which is, again, take it literally becomes nonsensical. Right, but hold so on. I would say is you, even if if sense. we no? right, well, even if we are even if we're a charitable, and we say that the Quran is only about things that get you to heaven, only about things about how you relate to God, and we limit it in that sense. So that means that you, you, we're now allowed farming books, we're allowed financial books, yeah. we're allowed um, books of feek even, yeah. right? The reality is that it's saying that in all things connected to religion, it explains them in detail. The point that I make, what's your name bro? Mishud. Mishud. The point that I'm making to you Mishud is that the Quran contradicts your position. It's not just that the Sunnis and the Salafis and the Shia are inconsistent. The Ahmadiyya are inconsistent as well. A religion that is self-contradictory, as I'm exposing to you, is not a true religion. Can I bring you in a parallel to that? You can try. So, advancing ideas, I'm just thinking in my head. Yeah. Not changing subject, but it's linked. Okay. The Paracletus. Paracletus, yeah. Will come. Yeah. And he will teach you all things. Correct. So. Sorry. Sorry, I'm following. Other masters beside him. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I'm with you on that. That's another verse. We can we can go through. The, you take a literal no, reading of the verse. It becomes nonsensical. Just like if I take, let's say, let's take your thing. Did the, does the Holy Spirit teach you all things? Great. And this brother is exactly why you should become a Christian. Go on. Because the way the church understands that verse is that the Holy Spirit is guiding the church into all truth and the Holy Spirit is active outside of the church 
guiding people to the Christ. In the Christian religion, we can incorporate other forms of knowledge. That's precisely because of this verse. Because of this verse, Christians can incorporate scientific knowledge. Christians can incorporate other forms of truth because all knowledge, whether it's secular or religious, is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Anyone who knows anything that is true at all, whether they are a Muslim, a Christian, a Jew, or an atheist. That that's, a new, that's a new one. Can you back that up a bit, though? So if I, seek, yeah. if I speak to truth, yes. you're saying that that is the Holy Spirit talking through me? That you have been able to access truth is a gift of the Holy Spirit, yes. Can you back that up an end? Yeah, because truth. Be because I'm taking that verse literally. Yeah. And you've, you, you said all truth, all things. Yeah, because the Spirit is truth. The Spirit is truth, and therefore that which is truth is of the Spirit. Back that up in some verse. Yeah, I will show you. Yeah. What do you think what's the verse? What is it? Well, we can go into that after if you want to. Yeah, shall we? It, shall Let's we? finish up here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So again, I would, my, my message would be, you put up many Hakanic verses, great, you done your young study. You take it literally, completely literally, it becomes nonsensical. I agree. Just like, for example, when the Quran says that the Muhammad, when, he said, when God speaks to Muhammad saying, you didn't throw the stones yeah. in the Battle of Badr, it was God. Take it literally, nonsensical. Yeah. But you can use it as a guidance for the righteous. Somebody who uses their brain, uses their knowledge, uses their own common sense, they can understand what it's saying. Yeah. And the Quran is only 6,600 verses. It's not going to give us every single little instruction. Right, and that's Anything the... complementing complementary to it? I was, I was charitable, I was charitable in saying that if we l even limit the, the Quran's scope to just religious, religious matters, it claims, either, it? it claims, but the Quran claims. So what you're doing is you're contradicting the Quran's claims directly. It's a reading, it's your reading of that to which Ahmadiyya scholar, no Quranic person, even the companions of the Prophet, did not understand it like that. And if that was the case, the Prophet would have explicitly said, don't do what I say, follow what the Quran says. But yeah. we find complementary to these. So, so it's best to understand from the Prophet, all the three generations, none of them have taken your reading. You're okay. entitled to your reading. But it's not our reading, I would say. Okay. So let's let's just talk about truth in scripture. Go on. Because in scripture, the Bible doesn't claim that the truth is only in the Bible. Okay. Right? In so I'll show you, right? It talks about truth being in creation. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you I'll show you that. No, no, I believe I okay. think for it. Yeah. It, it shows, and um, because the Bible says that truth can be found in other places, Christians are not bound to the logic that says all things have to be found in the Bible for us to believe them. We can inquire into nature, for instance, and we can discover truth. It also says in the Bible that the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth. So within the church, all that is necessary for salvation can be found. The fine church there. The church is the ecclesia, it is the people that have been called out from the world so and they come together in the name of Jesus to be the disciples so of Jesus. So the church in medieval times were very, very scientifically incorrect. Uh, so were, were they guided then or not? No, no, I'm no. church, I don't know. I understand, what's your understanding of church? So, if you take yeah, church, I'll, I'll deal with that. Century, I'll deal with that. They believe in that they, the earth was a center. Yeah. They believe, they went against science. So do you, so the hadiths of Muhammad. You know hadiths of Muhammad go against science. He was a infallible, he was a man. Yes. So some, I don't have a problem with that. Right, great. The Quran wouldn't though. Yes, so, right. So, well, the Quran also goes against science. <laughs> and I can show you that as well. Let's go into that. But anyway. But no, 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 let, let, no, no let, it's really important. Go on then. So the church is the body of people who follow Jesus Christ as his disciples. Do we and, have a church after and, that and, as well? What, sorry? Do the church continue? Yeah, the church has years? continued through generation to generation. And that church has established institutions which we also call church. Okay. Right, which is where the confusion usually comes in for people. It does. I right? understand Ecclesia. Yeah. Congregation, that's what it means. But the, 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 so the institutions are valid, 
but the church is the body of believers. So, and everything that is necessary for salvation, the church knows. And it knew even before the New Testament was written. Okay. Because when Paul was writing his letters, he was writing before the Gospels were written. And when he was writing his letters and he said the church is the pillar and the foundation of truth, then obviously he's talking about the church being the depository of that which God has come to reveal in Christ. And that was before the New Testament, which means it's before the Bible. In Psalms, in, I think it's in Psalm 19, it might be Psalm 19 or uh, 24, I'm not exactly sure, one or the other, or maybe somewhere in between. But it, it talks about the, 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 the stars in the heavens pour forth speech night and day, and there is no tongue or nation on earth that has not heard their words. It says in Romans chapter 1, it says in Romans chapter 1 that nature displays, no, nature displays the truth of God so that no one can be found with excuse. Okay. So that we might know the attributes of God. We'll go into that as problematic as well, I think, I think anyway. But anyway, this body of truth, you said all truth is in the found is the foundation. All of salvific the truth. truth. All, all sal I qualified it. From the beginning I qualified it. All salvific truth. Did Paul say that though? Yeah, Paul wrote that about the church. What did he say? Exactly. Did he say so? Do you want me to find it for you? Oh, yeah, go on. I'll find it for you. I'm wondering whether Paul qualified it or not. Right, I'll pull it up for you. It's fair. The reason I'm asking is because throughout history, science has been evolving. We've been wrong, we've been right, wrong, right. I'm wondering if what he's saying is correct, whether scientific truth has also been backed up by the church, and surely we should have good, correct teaching from a church in the past. Not necessarily the Roman Catholic, but from some sort of church. Right, bear with us. Right, it says, if I delay, you may know how one ought to behave. So there's the qualification. You might know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and buttress of the truth. Which passage is that, sorry? That is in two, uh, 1 Timothy 3.15. 1 Timothy 3.15. So it corresponds to quite nicely 2 Timothy 3.15, which talks about scripture. 1 Timothy what, sorry? 1 Timothy 3.15. So in the church is all that is necessary for a man to be saved. Right? Okay. But the Bible says that there is truth outside of scripture, outside of the church. He says the spirit, the spirit of truth will guide the church into all truth. Now, you asked, well, what about when the medieval church got science wrong? Yeah. Right? So I'm going to deal with that directly. When the church, when we believe as Christians, right, that the spirit of truth guides us into all truth, that means the church has the authority to recognize truth. And when it recognizes truth, it incorporates that truth into its worldview.